Hey, Pete. Hey, Nick. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. Uh, Same. Pete, Pete from Microsoft. Same. Uh, very involved in driving the whole kind of MIDI 2.0 agenda and how it integrates with the Microsoft uh, Windows operating system. Uh, I guess this is our yearly, so what's up, kind of <laughs> <laughs> meeting. So, yeah, yeah. And so we've been doing a lot since uh, the last time you and I talked about this. Uh, we've, we're getting ready to ship our new MIDI stack later this year. Uh, it's a complete rewrite of MIDI on Windows, uh, all the way from the driver through to the API. And it, uh, it, it, it deals not just with MIDI 2.0, it takes care of a lot of the issues that everybody brings up. So it's multi-client, so we can have more than one application using it at a time. Uh, it has um, support for app-to-app -app MIDI and virtual MIDI built into the box. Uh, it's scriptable, so people can create um, their own automation. I remember you were doing a lot of automation stuff with MIDI on uh, Mac OS. You'll be able to do those types of things here on Windows as well. Uh, it has... Um, uh, support for all the new transports in MIDI, so USB MIDI 2.0, as well as MIDI 1.0. It's got uh, it really like a whole lot of stuff. What it's, about uh, RTP MIDI? Is that still uh, So there? RTP MIDI, I was actually talking with Benoit earlier today, uh, and he has some open source code that uh, we might actually incorporate into pulling RTP MIDI into the stack. Um, our whole stack is, is open source. It'll ship in Windows, but we're developing everything in open uh, on GitHub, so we might take in a pull request on that and get RTP MIDI in there kind of like as a last minute thing. Uh, but we are also doing Network MIDI 2.0, which uh, I think is going to be the, the, the more important protocol for yeah, us over time. Yeah, I was talking to uh, some of the guys over the, one of the other booths, and they were saying that uh, there's Th that new protocol is, you know, if they could bake that into the OS, it's got so many mo more capabilities, right? Yeah, and it's it's really fast, and you know, when you can have like a hundred meter long cable between your MIDI devices, and you can have things backstage and in front of stage and stuff, the network MIDI stuff really does uh, does a great job with that. Yeah, excellent. So uh, you've got a laptop here and some I do. other stuff. What what are you showing us? Some uh, some real life examples yeah, of yeah. things? Yeah. Yeah. So. I've been talking about it for a while, and I think it would be helpful if I actually showed something working once in a while. So what I've done here is, um, this is one of the tools that comes with our uh, MIDI stack in Windows. It's just the monitor. So I can, and it's just uh, something you can automate. It's, uh, and I can get notes from the A88 Mark II, which is a UMP that's, MIDI 2.0 device. That's the Roland 2.0, yeah. yeah. It's a really nice thing. So I can see the notes that are coming through there. Um, you see, I. I can't go super fast or whatever. And that's just like a monitoring tool that we have. The same tool, you can use it, you can record SysX, you can send SysX, you can send individual messages. It's really, it's the all-in-one console tool. And that'll be Windows. part of the OS. So yeah, and so that'll be part of the OS. Uh, we might actually ship it through our store, but it'll, it's still part of the, the Windows stack here. We'll have an end user, um, GUI tool as well for configuration for things like renaming devices and uh, setting up network connections and stuff as well, right? There's something else I, w I do want to show you here though because showing our internal tools is, is kind of fun, but this is only going to matter if we get partners to adopt yeah. uh, MIDI, right? That's the key. So one of the applications that I showed in the presentation I gave on Friday is uh, by Bremer's uh, Audio and they have Multitrack Studio now supports uh, MIDI 2.0 with our uh, Windows MIDI stack, the development uh, release of that. And then I think a lot of your viewers will recognize this application here. Yeah, that looks kind of Steinberg-y. Yep. So Steinberg has been working with us to incorporate MIDI 2.0 on Windows. It's already supported on the Mac, so they already have all their internal um, uh, high resolution t uh, uh, values for velocity and stuff in there. They just had to plumb it up through our API. So if I, uh, if I arm this track and if I record, and we'll hope uh, this all works here. So you see the notes are coming through from the A88. And I think the important thing to note on that, let me stop that for a second, is I'm going to look at this. And if I look at one of the notes that are on there, there we go. If I look at one of the notes that are on there, it's going to be a little hard to see, but the velocity on that, is there any chance you can see it? I can actually make this a little bit bigger. I can zoom in, I think. Yep. 
through the power of cameras. Beautiful. All right, so it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, so, it's so the a velocity is a fractional value. Um, you can tell I'm not a piano player because I didn't get it anywhere near 100, but that's because we now have like, I think it's 16 bits of velocity on uh, MIDI 2.0 devices. So it's important that that stuff can make it all the way into the DAW and give you a lot more expressiveness on those. Well, it seems to be that's where a lot of the, a kind of almost development alongside the MIDI 2.0 thing. We've got all of the French controllers, you know, the Osmos, these guys over here yep. who, are, who are working on expressive high resolution control input. Right. You know, I mean, it's, and it seems to be those things will hopefully to be able to marry up. Yeah, and I, all the DAWs already keep like really high resolution values internally, so now we're able to like store them but also transmit them across the wire have that information used on the, the, your, your different DAWs and whatnot. So this is an important step for us. Uh, you know, we're working with other partners as well because there are lots of other DAWs out there. I'm a big Studio One user. Studio One folks, please, please, I really want you to support this. Uh, you know, and Bitwig and a bunch of other ones, we're talking with all those different companies to get them to support MIDI on Windows. Uh, and even if you don't use MIDI 2.0 right away, even if you don't have a MIDI 2.0 device, the new stack on Windows is going to get you a lot of benefits, especially on the performance side. So that's a It'd big just deal be for better us. quality. So yeah. I mean, I guess the other uh, other thing is the uh, query um, side of things because that's that's the holy grail. And we need you know more people to build that capability in, so that when you plug something up, it just goes, "Here's what I got. What do you want?" You know, that's right. what we, that's what I guess end users are really after as well. Yeah, and. Um, it will be there, so we want to make sure that when we launch later this year, we have lots of application partners that support us, uh, as well as all the hardware partners that we're working with as well. Excellent, so uh, this is coming out later in the year, right? Later in the year. We don't have a date yet because it's one of those things that we'll ship when we're satisfied that it's done. Uh, for version 1.0, there's always more we can do. But it's getting closer. That yeah. kind of that tomorrow is is now tomorrow rather than next right. year, right? So exactly. Like this, um, we've already uh, have our fourth developer preview out on GitHub and our Discord uh, server, and the developers are able to use that. We don't recommend users try it out yet, but developers for sure should be looking at that. Excellent. And now we're also going to talk to. Uh, to Andrew as well about some of the, uh, the kind of other yeah, challenges. Yeah, because we're not the only ones doing MIDI 2.0 stuff here. There's lots of, lots of exciting things going on in this space. So, uh, Andrew, lovely to speak to you. Nice uh, speaking to you. Pete suggested that uh, this section of the video should be called, so why should anybody give a bleep yeah, about, about this? Me too. <laughs> Look, we've been talking about MIDI 2 for a while. It's, it's, it's been on people's radars. I mean, this year is really the kind of precipice of where we're actually going with MIDI 2. Um, We've actually seen a real uplift. I mean, we were here nine months ago. We had about two items to show. Now we actually have quite a lot of actual real products, like the, the three keyboards that are here actually all have some version of MIDI 2 on them. That's a really good sign. We actually have uh, applications. So all of these things that are on the wall are actually things that people, the public, can actually have access to, which is a real big shift in what we've been, what we've been saying for a long time. And what we're actually getting back now is the people are actually trying it and they're actually responding and going, oh yes, we really like this bit. I mean, we've been doing the demonstration of the piano profile today, uh, sorry, and yesterday we had a big presentation and we keep getting people going, oh please, I really want this, I really actually love it. And it's two parts to that, which is the, the, the high resolution, which Pete mentioned before, which has been really effective, but also things like, the fact that it sets up the devices for you and people don't, as musicians, you don't yeah. want to be mucking around. Yeah. We've talked about this a long time, but it's actually becoming fruition now and people are now saying, yes, yes, we really want it. So that's that's been really good. I guess in a way, uh, it's a vic you're a victim of how successful and pervasive MIDI 1.0 is. Exactly. Because everybody's got all this old hardware that where the, the firmware's baked in and they yeah. not. Is there, a, I mean, I'm just curious, you, is there any way that, 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 that there could be some sort of interpolation layer that where it would, you know, well, scale MIDI, up or yeah, whatever? Yeah, MIDI 2 is all backwards compatible, right? So we're not actually, so everyone's got gear, we recognize that everyone should not be throwing away anything that they've got, right? You stick with what you've got, it's fantastic. The high resolution stuff, you're obviously going to need new gear for, just because of the way that goes. So there's probably some interpolation that people can do but you're still not going to get it. You're still not going to get that extra bit of resolution that you probably really start, you know, the, the composers and the pianists and that kind of thing, they really appreciate that. 
but there's nothing to stop that, uh, you know, someone may create that product somewhere. But it's interesting, as I was saying to Pete, about how uh, sort of parallel to this, people are kind of looking for their own solutions to high resolution yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, MP expressivity, you know, through MPE and yeah. through uh, their own kind of proprietary things. And, and, and MPE is a big part of that sort of journey that's been going on for years. Um, you know, MPE was kind of like, in a, in a strange way, a bit of a precursor to the public side of what MIDI 2 can do. And all the MPE stuff should say, it should certainly um, incorporate the new MPE profile, which kind of fixes a bunch of problems with MPE and making sure the two devices go together. Um, but that's the other part of that MIDI 2, which is that whole connectivity. But yeah, certainly expressivity is a really big factor that everyone we've been talking to has been like, yes, we really want to do it. And the interesting part about it is the manufacturers are, that we've been speaking to, they all want to actually incorporate that as well. You know, there's been actually a really good response. Well, we're going to get a whole new generation of expressivity because when you play something with that level of, uh, I mean, I, I keep going on about Osmos because that is a, yeah. a, a an easy example because there's yeah. lots of examples. And like I it, think there's going to be whole bunches of new instruments and new devices. Like we, we think about things in terms of keyboards and stuff like that. But if you start looking at things like uh, mixing discs that are controlled by MIDI or, or, I don't know, lighting controls, there's now a whole bunch of extra things. We lose all that stepping, and um, that's really going to be a, a big improvement to the industry as a whole. It's like increasing the frame rate almost, isn't it? It's sort of, Sorry. It's like an increase in frame rate when you're looking yeah, at the exactly. stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, it's going to be like from going from your black and white TV to your color TV to your high def TV. You know? So what's the next big milestone for you guys? What's the sort of next so corner our, to be turned? Yeah, yeah so our big, uh, our big thing that we're trying to do at the moment is what I said before. We're trying to reach out to everybody and say, look, as opposed to previous, you know, in the past with MIDI, the, the MIDI Association, we're a lot more supportive and we're really actually out there to help you. We don't want people to be doing this in isolation and trying to figure out what they're doing. We actually want to really engage with those people. And the other thing that we're working on is obviously building more and more specifications that actually enhance for the musician um, and making sure that they actually have a lot more sort of uh, capability of the things that they're asking for. So we've done a lot of that bottom end code, all that bottom end design. Now we're just putting the things on top that actually works with it, what everyone wants to do. So in terms of uh, the industry as a whole, I mean obviously, uh, in terms of the industry as a whole, one of the hard things is adoption of, of a standard. Exactly. Uh, uh, do and you think, think you've got everybody on board now? Have you? Yeah, kind of most, and people we didn't even realize were on board, which is actually even better. But the other thing that we're finding is most of the companies are starting with one little part that really suits what they want to do. We're not expecting everyone to take on every different specification that's out there. That's, that's too much. But people are going, look, we're going to start with just that little bit. We'll start with a bit of high resolution. We'll start with a little bit of this. We're also finding that some companies, what they're doing, like Korg, is that they're actually building out their, um, their, their network of products to use MIDI 2 and MIDI CI and those kinds of features because what it does, it allows third parties to come in and talk to them without having to have special kind of you know, integrations and things like that. And that's actually a, a whole new area of, 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 I think, of the industry is going to really take I on. I suppose that's quite interesting because with all of that data that can be moved between devices, there are kind of almost app onboard applications that could be written to translate that and tech. I mean, yeah, yeah, so I, and, that's, and that's kind of what we're finding. Like, we're to, I've, I've been talking to even little small developers and they're like going, yeah, we can just use this now. We don't have to write, um, you know, we don't have to write anything special and we know that it's going to work, you know, initially with just the Korg stuff, but the next device that comes along, they can just go and write what they need to, to do and it's going to just work and they don't have to rewrite for every different thing. Yeah, no, really interesting. Uh, well, thank you so much thank uh, for you. talking to us, Andrew and Pete. Um, have no worries, a great thank you. Rest of the day.